Welcome. This video is to walk through the Ivy Tech dual credit application for students who are completing Ivy Tech dual credit courses in their high school or their local career center, or for students who are planning to attend classes at Ivy Tech as a high school student through dual enrollment. We use the dual enroll website for our dual credit application these days. So you could find that at ivytech.dualenroll.com. There'll be a link in the description below this video as well for you to access. If you have already set up a dual enroll account and are returning to register for classes this next year, you could go and log in using your username and password. If you've forgotten that information, there is an option down below the login button to click the forgot your username or password link and that will take you through a process to either reset your password or to get your username and confirm your account. But if you are brand new to Ivy Tech Dual Credit, you will need to create your account using the Create My Account button on the New Students menu. This will do two things. It will set up your dual enroll account, which will allow you to register for classes, and it will also complete the Ivy Tech Dual Credit application to assign you an Ivy Tech student ID number and email address. So go ahead and click that Create My Account button. You'll have the option to begin the application here. So you'll select your high school from the list. Uh, there's a long list of all the high schools available in the state of Indiana. Easiest way to find yours is to just start typing that information in. Eventually, it will narrow things down to your high school. If for some reason you don't see your high school on the list, double check that your spelling is correct. And then if you still don't see it, reach out to your local K-14 team. You could create your login here. This could be whatever you'd like it to be, but we encourage you to do something memorable. Uh, your high school email is usually a good option just to make sure it's something that you remember, you'll always have access to throughout your high school career. But you can use whatever applies there. So if you wanna use just the first part of that email, so maybe you just wanna use uh, that part right there, whatever makes the most sense for you, uh, you can use that. Just make sure you jot it down so you remember it for later. Password, go ahead and create a password that will be memorable for you. Again, you'll want to have access to that down the road as well. It will let you know if that password doesn't match, so you need to make sure you enter it correctly both times. There we go. Now it likes it. For your name on this page, it's really important that we have your legal name. So there will be an option on the next step of the application to add a preferred name. So if you go by a name that's different from your legal name, you'll have the option to add it in a moment. Here we need your official legal first and last name on this record. Your date of birth is required here as well. It is in kind of a different format in dual enroll. It's the year, then the month, then the day. So the easiest way to enter that correctly is to click this date selector and then just go back, choose your year first, and then you could go in and choose the month and then you could choose the day. So if I was July 6th, I would wanna make sure it was showing up in this format that my birth date is July 6th, 2010 versus June 7th, 2010, something like that. So use that date selector to make sure you have the right date. At the bottom, you can add your email address. You do need to provide at least one contact method and it's important to note that this is the student's contact information. So do not use parent contact information on this initial step. So we do need your email. I generally recommend that you use your high school email just to make sure that you can get emails from dual enroll uh, coming to your high school email address. It's gonna automatically confirm your account using an email if that's the only option that you provide. If you provide a phone number, then it will also provide a confirmation via text. So if you provide a phone number, it will default to a text confirmation. So if you don't want to add your cell phone number, just choose that prefer not to provide a phone option. That's probably a good idea, especially if you don't have cell phone service in your high school, uh, or you just don't have service on your plan in general, default and just use the email option. I'm going to go ahead and use a phone number just for ease of getting through this step right now. If you do that, it's going to send you a confirmation code to your phone. And again, if you use an email, it's going to send you an email with a link that you'll use to confirm your account. So once your account is confirmed, it will automatically take you back into the application to continue working through these menus. So you'll see over on the right hand side are all the different menus that we're going to work through in this process. 
If it's green, it means it's already done. So we did the initial account setup step. If it's orange, that means it's the ones you're working on right now. Things that are not done yet are all uncolored or white or gray there. So your name is gonna be there. If you need to tweak that right now, you realize it was typed incorrectly, you could update it here. Here's where you can add that preferred first name if you go by something other than your legal name. Go ahead and select other information as appropriate. Again, if you realize maybe your birth date was incorrect on the initial step, go ahead and update that here. Make sure it's correct. We need your mailing address. So this is your home address, not an email address. This is where you get your mail or your Amazon packages delivered. Make sure that is in there correctly. You can add a cell phone number here if you didn't do it on the previous step. Uh, if your phone number is the same as the cell, we just need it the one time. If you'd like to take the number out, you could do that here as well, but we do still need that email. So once you click update, it's going to take us to the next menu. But on this particular step, it's going to compare the address you entered against the U.S. Postal Service database just to make sure things are correct. So you'll see a pop-up here. This is how you entered it. This is what the U.S. Postal Service uses. So you could just double check and verify that's correct, except the green verified address is the correct address. If this is not correct, and this is the actual format for how your address should be entered, uh, you could click this use original as adjusted option as well. It will take us to the student demographics page where you can add your citizenship status. If you are a non-US citizen and you do not have an assigned social security number, there's going to be an additional step later in the application that we'll talk about when we get to the student ID section. So go ahead and fill in your demographic information as is appropriate here. The bottom of this is a brief college survey. It's asking if you're thinking about college after graduation, if Ivy Tech is on your radar, what type of college you might be thinking about. No obligation here. This is just some information for us as far as kind of what students are thinking about uh, who are dual credit students. The next page is the Ivy Tech Community College Terms and Conditions page. So this is some information about different policy information. There are some links to additional policy pieces as well if you want to check those things out. So make sure you read through that you've understood what these things mean for you as a dual credit student. You are verifying that to the best of your knowledge, the information you are entering on this application is correct. So that's important that you're giving us correct information on the college application. Go ahead and click update from there. The very next page is the FERPA disclosure. So FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. This is the federal policy that governs disclosure of information from education partners to high school students. So one important thing to note is that through FERPA, we are automatically allowed to disclose information about your dual credit record to your high school. So we have a, an official partnership with your high school that allows us to share information with your counselor or other folks at the high school. Uh, so go ahead and read through this information. Once you have read through that, you can acknowledge that you understand your FERPA rights. The folks that we are not automatically allowed to disclose information to are anybody outside your high school. So that would include folks like your parent or guardian, if you work with a mentor, uh, anything like that. So if you'd like us to be able to uh, disclose information to folks like that, then you need to give us that consent here. Now, this is a new step in dual enroll this year. Uh, you can authorize us to release information to the individuals that you list below. So you would want to add your parents to this so that if your parents should ever call in to Ivy Tech and have information about your record, we could communicate with your parent about that. So go ahead and list your parent here. And the relationship, so they are your parent or guardian. You could put in whatever might make the most sense there. So up here, it will describe the type of information that we can release to the folks that you're listing here. So the credit hours that have you have earned or are enrolled in, uh, the name and the number of courses that you've completed or are enrolled in, and also um, the courses that might be needed to earn a degree or credential with Ivy Tech. So we can help have those conversations with your parents to coordinate with you and your parent to make sure you have everything that you need. So go ahead and list their information down here. If you do not give consent, you're not required to fill this bottom section out. But that means if your parent calls and asks questions, we are not able to communicate with your parent. So best practice is to go ahead and give us that consent and list those individuals down below here. 
There is some information in the note. Uh, if you want us to disclose additional information beyond this, there's actually a different form that's required that's a little more extensive. Uh, you can email the K-14 Central Support here if you need access to that form. Once you click update on this page, it'll take you through to your parent contact information page. So this is where we need to contact information for at least one of your parents or guardians. So please fill in their full name here. First and last name are always helpful. And then indicate your relationship or their relationship to you. So they're your parent, they're your guardian, whatever might make sense there. And then you can indicate your parent or guardian's contact preference as well. So that they, do they prefer email? If you choose email, it will require an email address. If you choose text, it will require a phone number and both just requires both. So you could choose whichever one of those makes the most sense to you. It'll have you enter it twice to make sure the information matches that we have the right email address. On occasion, you might get an error on this page that that parent email or the parent phone number has already been taken. It might pop open a yellow box up here that says contact is already taken. That usually means that the parent email or phone number was used to set up the student account. So back on the initial account setup, either on yours or maybe on a sibling's account, usually it means the parent email or phone is already in use as the primary account setup. So if you're having issues on this page, go ahead and try an alternate email or an alternate phone number, uh, maybe for another parent or guardian, or you can reach out to your local K-14 team so we can help track down uh, where else that might have been used. If your parent's address is same as yours, go ahead and choose yes. And you do not have to fill this information in again. If you choose no, then you do need to provide your parent or guardian's address for us. Click update and you'll move to the high school menu over here. Automatically fills in the high school based on your initial selection. If at some point you do transfer high schools, you can come back to dual enroll and you can update that high school option. That's really important because as a student, you will only have access to the dual credit courses available at your local high school and the career center that that high school might be attached to. So if you move to a different high school, you'll need to update that. So there's no need to do a new application. You just come back in and you update your high school information. We do ask for your high school graduation date as well. So if you graduate in the spring, typically that is May or June of whatever year you are scheduled to graduate. So fill that in for us. Your counselor may or may not be listed here. So if you don't see anybody that you recognize as a counselor, just choose the not listed option. That works fine. And then we do collect some information from our dual credit students about who is eligible for free and reduced lunch programs. So indicate that for us if you know that you're eligible, if you're not eligible, or if you're just not sure, the I don't know option is there as well for you. The final step on this part of the application is the student identification page. This is where you do need to provide your social security number because you're completing an official college application. Ivy Tech uses your social security number to ensure that we are matching to a unique student, uh, that there's not a duplicate application or another student in our system that maybe has close to the same name, something like that. We wanna make sure that we're creating a unique application for you. So if you have a social security number, we do need it here. Uh, if you have one, but you don't have access to it right now, then this gives you some information. You can log out right now and be done and then come back to the application later when you're with your parent or guardian or you have access to that information and fill it in there. So if you need to pause in the process here, you can. Just make sure you come back and you enter that. Uh, we cannot process your application without that social security number. The only exception to that is if you do not have an assigned social security number, there's some instructions here. So if you're non-citizen or if you genuinely do not have an assigned number, then you need to reach out to the central support email. So you could just click that hyperlink. It will pop open an email for you and email our team with your name, your date of birth and your high school and let us know that you do not have a social security number. We will be able to process that information manually to complete your application We'll reach out to you with some more information about that process. So a couple of different options, depending on your uh, your current status. This is going to validate your social security number. So if you're just putting in a bogus number, it's not going to accept that. So if I update that here, it's going to flag that because that's not a valid social security number. So you need to make sure that you are entering 
a valid social security number from this step. That way it can complete. Please double check that it is your social security number, that it's not a sibling's or somebody else. We need to make sure it is your number on this step. So once you've entered a valid social security number and click update, you're gonna see one more step. It is the final verification. This is really important that you verify this information is correct. So take a moment, review the information on this page, your name, make sure your date of birth is in the correct format, uh, that your email is correct, all of those pieces are here. If you need to update this information, so just click back to the menu where you first entered it, so the student address for all of your information, you can still update this here. So if I realized, ah, wait a minute, my date of birth is not July 6th, my date of birth is June 7th. I need to come back in here and choose June 7th instead. So maybe those things were just switched around. I could go ahead and update that page. And that's going to jump me right back to that final verification. So now I have my date of birth in there correctly. Once you've verified all that information is correct, go ahead and click this, I confirm and update. Once you do that, you will not be able to update this information. So that's important to verify it first and then go ahead and click the update. So once you've done that, it is gonna send all that information off to Ivy Tech to complete your dual credit application. Uh, a couple of things will happen. Within the next day or so, you should receive an email from Dual Enroll that will say, congratulations, you are an official Ivy Tech dual credit student. That email will also include your Ivy Tech student ID number. So we call that our C number at Ivy Tech because it starts with a C. That is your official Ivy Tech ID. You will need to hang on to that. So hang on to that email for future reference. That email also contains a link for setting up uh, your Ivy Tech My Ivy account. So My Ivy is a separate account that students use to do things like completing the knowledge assessment to qualify for dual credit courses. Students use that to access tutoring, support resources, uh, our library resources, a lot of different support resources available in My Ivy. And finally, students use that to request their official Ivy Tech transcript. So in the email you'll receive from Dual Enroll, there will be instructions for setting up your My Ivy account. Those instructions are also included in the next video on this playlist. So we'll link to that in the description below, or just see the next video on the playlist for a walkthrough for setting up your My Ivy account. At this point in the process in Dual Enroll, if you are registering for classes in your high school, you are ready to go ahead and register for classes. We have a walkthrough video for registration as well that you could check out. We'll link to that in the description and it's also available on this playlist. For now, we'll go ahead and dismiss that. Just of note, if you ever need to get back to your profile, you could click this profile option over here. That will take you back into the information. So you could see since my application is done, the name and the date of birth field are now locked. So I can no longer edit that through dual enroll. But if you need to change that information at any point in the future, then there is now some information here for you. So you can email that central support email and let the team know that you need to update information and we will reach out to you about that process.